biggest home runs that have ever been seen in that Atlanta ballpark, whether in games or batting practice or name a time. Glendon Rush fouls one off to the left. One ball, one strike. In that home run derby, which is a week from tomorrow, the first night of the All Star break, Sammy Sosa, 553 homers, Paul Merrill, 539, Griffey, 500. You get three members of the 500 home run club who, at this point, have agreed to participate. Jim Tomey, a great slugger, Jason Giambi, Vladimir Guerrero. Barry Bonds, of course, was elected to the All Star team as well at 680 home runs. We don't know if he'll be in the home run derby or not. Rush strikes out. Onto the sixth inning. One nothing Cubs. Daddy, let's read. Gotta get rid of this headache fast. The moment of choice. Which will work faster, Tylenol or Advil? Truth is, Advil liquid gels will. They work faster, stronger, better than Tylenol on tough headaches. <laughs> Advance to Advil relief. Hey, where are the, uh, the things? Tickets. Where are the tickets? In your shirt pocket. Cab will be here in a minute. See if the flight's on time. I'm on it. Is everything here? Yeah, everything. My blue swimsuit? Mm hmm. Sunscreen? 15 and 30. Beach towels. Beach towels, snorkels, flip flops, camcorder. Get a new one fast. With Circuit City's Express Pickup, you can order online and pick up in minutes. Circuit City, we're with you. I'll just keep this up front. <laughs> Junior Banana Split. Sonic's got it, others don't. Introducing Sonic's new Junior Banana Split. Half the size, but all the taste for just 99 cents. Drive in tonight and get any of your favorite desserts. We'll be open till at least midnight all summer long. Dreaming of more movie choices? With DirecTV, you can add one of our great premium services for just $12 or less per month. Then add a second choice for $11, a third choice for $10, and so on. It's savings made simple. So whether you love movies, sports, or you just want more variety, get the choices you've been dreaming about. Visit directtv.com or call 1-800-DIRECTV and order today. Have you ever wanted a genie? You make a wish and you get what you want. We are. DirecTV DVR with the TiVo. It's a little box. That's my genie. It's awesome. DVR is digital. Digital video recorder. There's no tapes. You just punch in. Click. Boom. It's recorded. Every time the show airs. And we can record them both at the same time. Same time. You can go out and have dinner. I watch what I want to watch. Whenever I want. It feels like I'm running my own network. Bye-bye, network schedule. Bye-bye. DirecTV DVR. Call 1-866-GET-A-DVR for this special offer. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Brought to you by Advil. Doctors nationwide recommend Advil for strong, long-lasting pain relief. And Circuit City. Check us out at circuitcity.com. Baseball on the 4th of July from Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Cubs won. The White Sox nothing. Mark Burley, the White Sox pitcher at the plate, facing Glendon Rush. Two pitchers who have uh, similar styles, who are pitching similar games right now. Meanwhile, Sam Ryan is not in Wrigley Field, but somewhere very close by as Burley tops one foul off to the right. Sam is on the other side of Waveland Avenue at the uh, the nearby firehouse. Sam, can you can you read me? I read you, John. You talk about a city divided. This is a firehouse divided. Look at this. Cubs fans on this side. They call them the anti-Cubs fans. On this side, the Sox fans here. Now, this is Steve over here. I think you can tell who he's rooting for. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven brooms. What happens if the White Sox come back and win this one? Ooh, that. I'm going to take all my brooms. I'm going to lock the doors and go to bed. <laughs> now we, now we go on over. Oh, he's I not would finished. Like to say one more thing. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Let the Sox fans weep. Okay, said that well. Now we come on over here to the White Sox side, or as Steve calls it, the anti cub side. This is Mike over here. Mike, you have to work with these guys. How are you dealing with this? That's pretty easy. They're actually uh, fun loving guys. Everybody loves baseball. Just now it's a little crazy because it's a crosstown rivalry. If it's just regular baseball, it's, it's all right in the house. Most of the time. One important question you guys get a call. How do you hear when you're sitting out here paying attention to the game? Uh, the computer's real loud, and we pay attention. Very close attention to make sure we know what's going on. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. No problem. Go White Sox. Let's go White Sox. Na 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 na. 
And they're sitting outside, Joe, catching the view of Wrigley. They can see the left field foul pole. And if and they had a pretty good view of the home run hit by Derek Lee out there back in the uh, the second inning. And you and I have been over there a couple of times. That's a called strike in the inside now to Juan Uribe. Burley struck out to start the inning. Harris grounded out. Uribe the hitter. And that slow curveball didn't do a whole lot of curving right there. Two and one the count to Uribe. Carlos Lee on deck. By the way, we're going to speak with Ozzy Guillen, the manager of the White Sox, live from the dugout before the Cubs come to bat in the last half of this inning. There's Ozzy Guillen. Seems to be a real big hit with Sox fans, too, in his first year as the White Sox manager. Two and two the count to Uribe. One to nothing. The Cubs are leading. Center field, Corey Patterson right there. Three up and three down again. When we come back, we'll visit with the manager of the White Sox, Isaac Ian. Cubs lead one to nothing. To cure athletes' foot, you've got to be fast on your feet. And nothing lets you treat faster than Lamisil AT. Lamisil AT cures athletes' foot with just one week's use. Not even a prescription can beat that. If you use Tenactin or Lotrim and AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. Who's going to do that? When your feet itch and burn, using Lamisil AT one week is proven to kill the fungus and keep you athlete's foot free for three months. Lamisil AT. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. <laughs> yeah. John Miller, Joe Morgan, and with us from the dugout, Ozzie Guillen. And uh, Joe, uh, I know you and Ozzie, pretty good friends over right. the years. But I just wanted to ask him, I know, how much does it affect his offense having Frank Thomas out of the middle of this lineup? I'll tell you what, every manager in, in America, you're going to have that problem. Especially uh, for us, we know how Magli is in the lineup. Obviously, you know, having Frank at the lineup, it will help. You know, it was tough for us to score some run, but... We try hanging in there, but we see what happens. Now, Ozzy, when is Maglio going to be back? Uh, well, hopefully for the All-Star break. We hope he was back before that, but right now the rehab uh, is going real well. He's working real hard, and hopefully uh, right for the All-Star break, he's coming back. All right. And your bullpen's in pretty good shape if everybody, you need him later? Yeah, everybody's in good shape. I think, think Takashi is doing a tremendous job. Uh, Paulie, the tournament stand outstanding, and Soto Marte, I think my bullpen's in great shape right now. All right, Ozzy, many thanks for coming on with us. Thank you. Ozzy Guillen, the manager of the White Sox, and again, we always appreciate very greatly whenever a manager comes on with us, and uh, right from the dugout, and we always promise that we will end the interview before he has to go back to work, before he's got to uh, start flashing signs and making decisions again. Cubs with the top of the order up here. Grudzelanik against Burley. Grudzelanik has singled and grounded out to third. I mean, uh, they're not just missing Frank Thomas, their designated hitter ordinarily, but Maglio Ordonia, I mean, two of their best hitters. And when they've got Lee, Canerco, Thomas, and Maglio all in there, I mean, that is fearsome. As Grudzelanik is down on strikes. Seven strikeouts for Burley. Ordonez was hitting 311 when he got hurt. He had 34 RBIs in only 42 games. He has not played in more than a month. So, I mean, what's that? Uh, five weeks have gone by. Got a, a problem with his left knee. In four of the last five years, he hit over 30 homers, over 100 RBIs, and hit better than 300. Also, Maglio can be a free agent at the end of the year. Corey Patterson takes a fastball from Burley for a strike. And here in Chicago, there's you know, all kinds of talk. I mean, the White Sox, Ken Williams, the GM, said they're, they're trying to sign him. That's foul up the first base side. 
And the uh, one of the columnists here in Chicago this week said that you know if they don't sign him when the season's over, the, the Cubs might sign him. And it could be a Sammy Sosa going to the north side all over again. <laughs> Going to the count to Corey Patterson. Sammy Sosa is on deck. One ball, two strikes. And Sammy on deck. Only one run so far in this game. The shortstop, Uribe. And he gets the speedy Corey Patterson. Patterson is now 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. And here comes Sammy. Now, if he hits one up there, that's foul. It would be impressive, though. And they're getting ready out there on uh, Waveland Avenue, just in case. Sammy hit one to right field in the rainstorm here yesterday. Number 553 lifetime. Curveball right to shortstop. Uribe. High throw. The tag by Canerco. Three up and three down. Onto the seventh inning. Lee, Canerco, Rowan coming up with the White Sox. I'm full! People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I haven't been this full since. Fullness from a value menu. Little announcement. We're full! <laughs> Introducing the Big Bell value menu from Taco Bell. A new menu of filling items like half pound burritos and double tacos. Designed to keep your stomach and your wallet full. I'm full, but you wouldn't understand that. Oh! <laughs> Get full on value. Think outside the bun. This 4th of July weekend, come to Lowe's and celebrate the red, white, and blue with great values. Buy select appliances from Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, GE, and other famous brand names, and we'll deliver the new and haul away the old absolutely free. Use your Lowe's card store-wide and pay nothing for 12 months on purchases of $299 or more. So this 4th of July weekend, come to Lowe's for values worth celebrating. Lowe's, improving home improvement. Can I tell you a secret? My man takes Levitra. Let's just say he notices a difference in the, the experience. Like, uh, we should do this more often difference. And why Levitra? Levitra helps improve erectile quality for men with ED. For my guy, Levitra works fast. And it gives him the quality response that he wants, time and again. It's why he counts on Levitra. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains or alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. In the rare case an erection lasts for more than four hours, seek immediate medical attention. My man takes Levitra. It's about the quality. And for him, Levitra works. Just look at that smile. Talk to your doctor today. Levitra. Quality when it counts. This Friday, hey see the movie. Hey, everyone, come and see how good I look. Everybody's talking about. Huh? You know I don't speak Spanish. Will Ferrell. Anchorman. You say classy. Rated PG-13. He really likes that dog. Starts this Friday everywhere. In Chicago, seventh inning now. Glendon Rush with a called strike to Carlos Lee. Now, the White Sox had their big hitters up here. The ones who are in the game, anyway. Carlos Lee pops one foul and back out of play. Lee has one of the White Sox three hits, a double back in the fourth inning. He'll be followed by Canerco, the leading White Sox home run hitter, and then Rowan. There's Canerco on deck. One, one of the things two strikes. That both of these pitchers are doing, they're staying out of the middle of the plate. They're staying out of the hitting zone. They're on one edge or the other. Off the glove of Ramon Martinez and into left field. Man, that ball was hit hard. And it's a base hit for Carlos Lee. Looked like a little breaking ball down, and Carlos Lee, I mean, went out and got it and pulled it. I mean, this ball is hit so sharply that all Martinez can do is just try to glove it. He didn't have time to get in front of it or do anything, just try to short hop it and go. The sun has almost disappeared beyond the horizon to the west of Wrigley Field. The 
There have been only seven hits in this game. Four for the White Sox, three for the Cubs. But four of the seven hits have been by the Lees. Carlos Lee has two hits for the White Sox, and Derek Lee has two hits, including a home run for the Cubs. All the other names on the two teams have only collected three hits total. Canerco takes a ball, one ball, one strike. John Roush up on the bullpen for the White Sox, tall right hander. We're in the seventh. Only one run has scored. And back to the bag is Carlos Lee. Carlos Lee runs pretty well, although he has only seven steals. Up the middle. Base hit into center field. Lee stops at second. Well, he got that pitch up. The one that the one that Carlos Lee hit was down. This one is up, and he's able to go out and get it and line it to center field. He did not try to pull it. We talked about Russia's sinker. That one didn't sink. He's trying to get a ground ball, but he did not get it down. So Canerco has his second hit. Kyle Farnsworth just ran down to the Cubs bullpen, but he has not started warming up. He ran down there and took a seat right next to Kent Merker, the only left-hander in Dusty Baker's bullpen. This is the first time in the game that the White Sox have had two base runners in the same inning. Aaron Rowan is up. What do you think, Joe? Is he bunting? I mean, he's the fifth-place hitter. Well, he showed us that he will bunt. I think he'll be bunting. And he bunts it foul. Well, not a great fundamental attempt. So you may see Oz again change and take the bunt sign off. Rowan, as we mentioned earlier, has not done well with men in scoring position, hitting only just above 150 for the year in these kind of situations. Gets the bunt down this time. Derek Lee. He had a real shot at second base. Not at third, but he, I think, could have gotten Canerco at second base, but he elected to get Rowan at first, and both runners have been moved up. Well, the catcher usually makes the call on that because he can see everything out in front, and the catcher will run out and tell him where to go with the ball. See, he's not helping him out right there. He definitely has a chance to get him, and Canerco doesn't run well. But he had pretty much made his mind up to go to first because he wasn't told probably by the catcher you have a shot at second base. So now Joe Creedy runners at second and third the White Sox getting a runner to third for the first time in the game and because there's a runner at second you can't play the infield in you have to play back which will allow Lee to score on a ground ball to the infielders. Brady hitting only 156 for the year in these kind of situations with runners in scoring position. But Frank Thomas has grabbed a bat in the White Sox dugout. Timo Perez, a switch hitter on deck. High pop up. Ramon Martinez at third. Two down. Excellent pitch there by Rush. He threw a couple of pitches away. And then he threw a fastball up and in. And he got the pop up that he was looking for. Look at that up and on the inner half of the plate. Perfect pitch. That's after two pitches away. And he came back inside and he got, got him to pop it up. Not Timo Perez. And Timo has been a tough out in spots like this, but he pops it up. Foul ground. Barrett comes over and he overruns it. A lot of congestion in that area. He was running toward the on deck circle. Running toward everything that's over there. I mean, you've got a pine tar. You've got a lot of different things on it. Watch, he'll take a look right there to see how close he is to the stands, but the ball hits behind him. Score is no play. 
So Timo's still alive with a chance to do some damage. Chases one. The slider. Perez is hitting 438 for the year with runners in scoring position. Well, he got called out on a pitch off the plate outside last time. I think if you're rush, you might want to go out there again. Crowd on its feet. Center field. Corey Patterson back. He's there. Inning over. Glendon Rush gets Creedy and Perez with runners at second and third. And now, seven inning stretch time at Wrigley Field. And the former Chicago Bears coach Mike Ditka to lead the crowd in singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Sing. One, two, three. Take me out. Oh. Take me out. Ah. I Some gasolines will leave dirt on my intake valves. That's why I like uh, a gas that helps keep my uh, my engine clean and running well, like Chevron with Tecron. Because uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise the outside doesn't matter much, does it? Chevron with Tecron. Introduces the first seamless integration of iPod and automobile. The Outdoor Alliance. We got a reacher. Are they superstars? No. Superheroes. Hey, Mister. The Great Outdoor Game, presented by Dodge, Wednesday, July 14th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Take me fishing, because our boat's cooler than any video game. Take me fishing and make me feel 16 again. Take me fishing because I miss my boy. To learn more about boating and fishing, visit waterworkswonders.org. Balls in the air. Wave your outfit off. <laughs> Didn't you catch it? Heads up. Whoa. Good job. All right. Nice. See? Remember, you got to call. I haven't thrown it yet. <laughs> Boys and Girls Clubs is the official charity of Major League Baseball. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Happy Fourth of July. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. And uh, the Cubs are leading the White Sox here. Interleague play, one to nothing. And this all Chicago matchup so far has been all Mark Burley and Glendon Rush. The uh, the two lefties have been superb. Moise Salou the hitter. Timo Perez in right center and Moise is 0 for 3. And a couple of lefties Joe they are not real hard throwers but they certainly don't know what they're doing out there. Well what they're doing is getting ahead of the hitters. And then getting the hitters to swing at their pitch. Derek Lee has delivered the only run of the game. That was with a long home run to left field back in the second. He singled in the fourth. He is two for two. The Cubs have only one other hit. And that was by Mark Rutzelite that led off the game. The rest of the team, one hit and 18 at bats. Curveball in the dirt. One thing Derek Lee is doing well is he is very patient here with Beverly. I mean, he's seeing the ball well. He's not chasing pitches out of the strike zone. That is just foul. 
toward the bullpen area where Kyle Farnsworth has just gotten out to start throwing. Lee, the fifth place hitter, Barrett on deck. Glendon Rush has given the Cubs seven shutout innings tonight against the, the slugging White Sox. One and two to Derek Lee. White Sox averaging 5.7 runs a game this year. That is fair. And right past Farnsworth in the bullpen. Lee digging for second. And he makes it well ahead of the throw by Carlos Lee. You can always tell when a hitter is seeing the ball well from the pitcher because he does not chase pitches with two strikes. He waits, gets pitches that he can handle, and then just rips them. This is similar to the pitch he hit for the home run, but he keeps this one fair right inside the bag, and he has a double. But you could tell he's seeing the ball very well off of Burley. He goes the other way on pitches that are away from him, and he pulls the ball when he tries to come in. Now Michael Barrett. He is lined back to the pitcher and grounded into a force play. Back to the screen. Well, he had a good pitch to hit there. And now if you're the Cubs, you have to get at least one more run. It is so difficult to shut out a good hitting ball club, although the White Sox had an opportunity there just to put the ball in play on the ground and they would have tied the ball game. Jammed it back to the screen. Two strikes. The White Sox bullpen busy now with the veteran right hander Mike Jackson now warming up. Michael Barrett at the plate hitting 333 with men in scoring position. Sammy Sosa 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Oh man. Well, he gets you looking for the cut fastball and the sinker, and then he just throws a good fastball right by you. You have to respect his fastball. That's one of the things that makes Burley such a good pitcher. You have to respect the speed on his fastball. And you can see Barrett very late on the swing. Just made him look bad. Here comes Ozzie Guillen. Ramon Martinez, the hitter, with Ray Ordonez behind him. He got first base open. Well, I think they wanted to decide whether they want to pitch to Martinez or Ordonez. They walked Martinez to get to Ordonez yesterday, and we'll see what they do in this ball game. That's what the conference is about. I don't think it's deciding whether to take him out or not. It's to decide which hitter he wants to go after. Burley, six and two thirds innings, one run, four hits allowed. Rush, seven innings, no runs, five hits. Burley with eight strikeouts, which equals his best strikeout total of the season. There's Rush looking on. And this is exactly what they did yesterday. Even after Ordonez had hit a home run, they decided that they would rather pitch to Ordonez in a clutch situation yesterday rather than to pitch it pitch to Ramon Martinez. And Ray Ardunas has never been known for his bat. He's always been known as a great defensive player. Ramon Martinez, a utility player who hits pretty well ordinarily. So two men on with two men out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. And the 2004 Major League Baseball All-Star Game coming on a week from Tuesday. Catch all the action live from Houston at 8 Eastern Time, 7 Central. And remember, the winner of this year's All-Star Game will establish home field advantage for its league's representative in the World Series. Ray Ordonez has hit one back to the pitcher, and he has struck out looking. Six hits, 44 at bats for him for the year. Look at that pickoff play to first and off the bare hand of Canerco, and the runners advance. Well, I, th I think they decided they were going to try to pick him off. Not a good play, in my opinion, because very rarely does that play work. But now they're probably going to end up walking Ordonez because the pitcher's on deck. 
I mean that's too far to come to try to make a play. Panerko was way off the bag. That was just almost impossible to make that play work from that point of the diamond. I mean, look how far he is. You know, and he's trying now you got to try to hit him on the run. That's just too far off the bag to try to work that play. Uribe throws out Ordonez. And the Cubs strand a couple. Now to the eighth inning. One to nothing, Cubs. Fight ravaging rain, scorching sun, and wind with Thompson's Water Seal Advance. Special technology allows it to penetrate deep to seal out 99% of the water right from the start. Thompson's Water Seal Advance, the most powerful water protection guaranteed. Now available at the Home Depot. Did you get your good years yet? Get to Goodyear's Summer Celebration Tire Sale for low prices on Goodyear tires. Buy four selected Goodyear tires and get up to $75 worth of free groceries. Tap into a great deal. Get your good years today. Get the camera. Introducing the 5 megapixel Cybershot T1 from Sony. The great little camera with a great big screen. Cybershot from Sony. Like no other. Join us all summer long for ESPN 25. This week on Who's Number One, we're counting down the biggest blunders. From Leon Let It Go to a trombone tackle. Biggest blunders on Who's Number One this Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. 40 American classics from a true American legend. Twinkle, twinkle, lucky star. Merle Haggard, 40 number I one hits. A special two-CD collection of 40 chart-topping hits from one of the most important country oh, artists of all time, including Mama, Mama Try. Mama tried, Mama tried. And Oki from Muskogee. I'm proud to be an Oki from Muskogee. 40 number one songs from country music's greatest even living artists. Even squares can have a ball. And when they're running down our country man, they're walking. The fighting side of me. Merle Haggard, 40 number one hits. Big city, turn me loose and set me To free. order, call the number on if your screen. We make it through December. Or order online at www.merle40hits.com. Two CDs, just $24.98. Plus $4.95 shipping and handling. Call now. Top of the eighth inning. The Cubs trying to sweep this series from the White Sox. White Sox have gotten the, the best of the Cubs. Most of the time in these interleague games between the clubs, the last eight seasons, but right now the Cubs with a chance to sweep them. They're leading, but just by the run, one to nothing. Jamie Burke, the eighth place hitter at the plate, and there's the big herd. Frank Thomas out on deck. Glendon Rush on the hill. Derek Lee to Rush covering, and there is one away. Tonight's Lowe's home team advantage. And that would be the Cubs starters here at Wrigley Field. The Cubs starters in this ballpark this year, 3.35 ERA. And that's the second lowest home ERA in Major League Baseball. So the Cubs have some uh, excellent pitchers, and they love pitching here at home. Well, what, that, Thomas. what that number tells you that a lot of times early in the season the, the wind had to be blowing in because this is a hitter's ballpark without the wind blowing in one ball and no strikes to Frank Thomas Thomas struck out as a pinch hitter yesterday and has never been very good at pinch hitting got a big rip at that one but right back to the screen but Johnny has struck out in nine consecutive games which is something that Frank Thomas just does not do and a couple of course a couple of those were pinch hit appearances strike on the outside one and two the count Thomas struck out both yesterday and Friday right. as pin, a pinch hitter and it's interesting because you say well how much difference is pinch hitting than being the designated hitter 
Thomas going after that fax point on the outside, finally get into the upper deck. Now some people believe that as a designated hitter, basically you're pinch hitting four times in the ball game, but you're still getting more than one or two swings during the game. Why not nobody on? One and two, the count goes inside. Strike three, call. Again, Rush was away, away, and then came hard inside. Away, away, you see him set up inside. He catches the inside corner. Frank was not happy about that call. Here's Willie Harris, the leadoff man. And a curveball spins in there for a strike. And Frank Thomas. Now 0 for 4 this year as a pinch hitter and 0 for the weekend and he struck out all three times late in these games. Two down nobody on Glendon Rush pitching the game of his life right now. Dropping down for the side with a curveball. Strike two. And the big crowd at Wrigley the Cubs fans rise to their feet. Harris stays alive. Kyle Farnsworth ready in the bullpen if needed. But so far, Rush has said, I don't need anybody. Strike three. The sign is retired. One to nothing. Cubs last of the eighth. Four and another walk by Tree 11 to force the skipper to make a decision here. Hey, you've reached the bullpen. Neither Dave, your lefty, or Bill, your closer are in right now, but you leave a message after the beep. I'll call you right back. Nice day for a ball game, hey, ladies? Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Yeah, I'm left handed. It's all here. You can kick off that summer project now and put off paying for it at the Home Depot. The one place with all the tools, supplies, and know-how for any project this summer. Now through July 5th, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $2.99 or more store-wide with your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Also right now, get free delivery on appliances. Make the most of your summer and your summer projects. You can only at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. You massaging? Oh, yeah. Ooh. New Dr. Scholl's Massaging Touch Insoles with tiny foam bubbles that massage your feet with every step. To start massaging, see the doctor, Dr. Scholl's. Now, for the first time on DVD, Santa is... I'm on my luck right! For adults only. <laughs> Batter Santa, the unrated version. Bad stuff we can't show you. Oh, no. Batter Santa, the unrated version. Own it today on DVD. If a concert hall can be acoustically tuned, if a 60,000-seat stadium can have a retractable roof, if an 80-ton bullet train can glide on air, why not your SUV? At GMC, our engineers don't just ask questions, they have answers. The GMC Envoy line of SUVs. Professional-grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Gentlemen, start your grills. New ballpark grill master Franks. Be big, be meaty, be frank. Thirty-eight thousand five hundred ninety-six. The official sellout attendance at Wrigley Field tonight, and the Cubs have a one-to-nothing lead over the White Sox. And here is. Shingo Takatsu, who is the White Sox closer now, and he throws a called strike to the pinch hitter, Tom Goodwin, batting for starting pitcher Glendon Rush, who is now finished for the night after eight shutout innings. Goodwin, a very fast outfielder, trying to get the Cubs going here against Takatsu, who's trying to keep the White Sox close. White Sox have some big hitters up in the ninth inning. First baseline, and Canerco will take it himself. 
And Goodwin is at number one. Well, the White Sox had an opportunity to at least tie the, the ball game in the seventh inning. They had a base hit by Carlos Lee to start the inning, a base hit by Canerco, and a well-executed sacrifice to get the runners in score. But you just needed two ground balls here. A ground ball there would have tied the ball game, but you get two fly balls, a pop-up and a fly ball, and you're out of the inning. So not good situational hitting there by the White Sox in that situation. Ground ball to any infielder would have scored a run. Ball one to Grudzelonic. That was Joe Creedy who popped up. The runners at second and third, and then Timo Perez hit the fly ball in the left center. If you reversed them, fly ball before the ground, before the pop up, you would have scored the run. But that's what situational hitting is all about. You know what needs to be done. You got runners in scoring position, runner at third, less than two outs. It's your job to get him in, either with a base hit or at worst a ground ball someplace. And maybe, and it, it, this is a, a, maybe a, a generalization that doesn't always apply. There's LaTroy Hawkins getting ready for the ninth inning. He's the Cubs closer now. That is off the glove of Harris at second. And Grunzelonic is safe with his second hit of the game. Log on to MLB.com to follow baseball live on the web with MLB.com's real-time stats, game day audio, and MLB.tv.mlb.com, where baseball is always on. So here is Corey Patterson. And that's ball one to Patterson, who is over two. But Joe, getting back to that, that point, and it's an overgeneralization that doesn't always apply, but in a game like this, where you, it comes to trying to manufacture a run like that, situational hitting, maybe a lot of National League teams would have an advantage over a lot of American League teams where the big inning is really the focal point behind an offense. And, of course, the White Sox, as much as anybody, if not more, because they're the, they've are the they been the highest-scoring team in the American League. But you have to look at what Ozzie Guillen did. He bunted them into scoring position, which tells your hitter, I want to get one of these runners home. And that's when the hitter has to change his approach. And go into the situational hitting mode of just trying to get the runner in from third with less than two outs. A base hit to score the runner from second is great, but you have to get the runner in from third first. But you're right, I mean, that is more of a National League style, but Ozzy again played it that way because he's in the National League ballpark. That's a called strike now to Patterson. One ball, one strike. Corey talking to the umpire, Doug Eddings about it. One out, one on. You know, having said that, though, the White Sox, even though they have all those sluggers and they score all those runs, they've had more sacrifice bunts than any other American League team. One and one the count. Popped up. Foul and back off to the left. That will reach into the crowd. Sammy Sosa on deck. Now one of the things you have to look at is who is the manager. Ozzie again is the manager. He wasn't a slugger. He was a guy that could steal a base hit and run do a lot of things to move the runners and that's what he was doing there. He knows that there are times when you just let the hitters hit and there are times when you have to give them some help and I think because they have one less bat in the lineup you have to give them some help every once in a while and he did that he did his job. When we saw the White Sox playing an American League game at Safeco Field a month ago and he bunted several times or had his players bunt several times in that game. One ball and two strikes to Patterson. Oh. Man, that, now that is a changeup. Well, this ball is definitely out of the strike zone. You can see Patterson hesitate. Watch, he hesitates right there and then goes ahead and swings at it. And, of course, it was out of the strike zone. Our radar gun got that one at 63 miles an hour. Two down here is Sammy Sosa now. Takatsu, the great closer from the Yakulta Swallows in Japan. 
Well, it was interesting because when we did the game in Seattle, Billy Koch was their closer, and he could not close out the game in Seattle. And since that time, he's been traded. And now Takatsu is, is the closer. Well, Koch is down with uh, Florida. And that slide is a little bit too low. Takatsu, who is 35 years old, born in Hiroshima, Japan, lives in Tokyo. Now that is where the Yakult Swallows play their home games. And more saves than any other closer in the history of the Japanese baseball. 260 saves there. Oh, man. Well, that's about as good a pitch as Sammy could hope to have, but he was fooled by the speed. This pitch was not down, but he was fooled. And remember that delivery, that unorthodox motion, helps him to hide the speed of the pitch. Takatsu with a 1.19 earned run average coming into this game. Runner at first, two down, one and one to Sammy. Came back to it again. Sammy got that one in the air. Shallow center. And Rowan is there. Is one enough to beat the White Sox? Uribe, Lee, Canerco coming up. Latroy Hawkins will try and make it a hold up. ESPN The Magazine on newsstands now. Who brings you the most power-packed summer vacation? Universal Orlando Resort and Radio Shack. And now your family can register to win one of 35 action-packed Universal Power Trips for four at Radio Shack, where you'll find travel essentials like the iGo Everywhere Power Adapter that simultaneously powers two mobile devices at once, in a car, on a plane, or at home. So wherever you go, I go. Visit UniversalPowerTrip.com or register at Radio Shack. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. A $4 late fee here, $8 there. When was it due again? Oh, the pressure. Hey, I just want to watch a movie. That's why I have Stars from DirecTV. Forget the hassles of the video store. For the price of a few DVD rentals, I get hundreds of hit movies each month on a variety of Stars channels. And this is how easy it is to watch. So long, late fees. Hello, Stars. Stars is just one of 12 distinct channels in the Star Super Pack. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV and ask for stars or visit directtv.com today. I would do just about anything to make a catch. Bang into walls, get dirty, dive into gravel. It's, it's a game, you know. We dove, we played in the dirt when we were kids. You play this game with a passion. MLB Extra Innings from DirecTV has up to 60 games a week. That's right, 60. You gotta see it to believe it. Incompetence is staggering. You are fired. The life she had was taken away. Now she's reborn. This person's very self-confident. And back. She doesn't like to play by all the rules. To fight for what she believes. Hey! You're under arrest. <laughs> Halle Berry is Catwoman. This film is not yet rated. Starts July 23rd. Top of the ninth inning, and there is Latroy Hawkins to try and protect a one to nothing Cubs lead over the White Sox. Hawkins, the former American leaguer with the Minnesota Twins. I mean, he's been battling against these White Sox for the last few years with the Twins. It'll be Valentin, the pinch hitter for Uribe, then Lee and Canerco. And you see, none of those three hitters has done real well against Latroy Hawkins. Well, obviously, we can't see whether they hit any home runs or not, but by the same token, you know, you wonder, you know, Rush was pitching a great ball game. And I think it's just the mindset of the way managers use their closers now. It doesn't matter. He goes eight innings and you take him out. You always bring a closer in in the ninth. One one to Valentin. Valentin has power. All three of these hitters coming up are capable of hitting a home run. Valentin has hit 17 of them. 264 average. Ozzie Guillen. You may be having a hard time believing he's given up only one run and he's behind in this game in the ninth inning. Just missing inside. Well, we talked about the fact that the Sox had scored a lot of runs for Burley this year, almost eight a game. 
this is unusual for him to have to go out and pitch as well as he has and just be trailing at this point. But he obviously handled it well. That's a, a swing. One ball, two strikes. Here's a look at who's hitting for power. The American League home run leader is brought to you by Gillette M3 Power. Yankees and Rangers at the top, and then the White Sox. And the White Sox could use the long ball right now. Big curveball dropping low. Pretty good eye there by Valentin. Nice try there by Hawkins. He got him to chase the slider and the curveball in the dirt. Pitch before, so throw it again. See if he'll go. Well, according to Kay's on it, got the front edge of the plate knee high. Two and two. Fastball. One away. Well, he just throws this fastball right by him. I mean, Valentin was protecting with two strikes, waiting a little bit, and can't catch up with that fastball. And that's a little difficult, too, because Valentin's been sitting over there on the bench as well, and then to run up there against Hawkins, that's not an easy task. One down, now Carlos Lee coming up. Lee has a double and a single tonight. One out, nobody on. One to nothing, the Cubs are leading. Down the right field line and foul into the bullpen area. Strike one. White Sox in their last four games have had a hard time scoring runs. They got two runs in Minnesota against Santana Thursday, although they won the game two to one. They got two here Friday and lost, and two yesterday and lost, and none today. Six runs in their last four games. One ball, one strike to Carlos Lee. Paul Canerco with 20 home runs on deck. A lot of folks brought their brooms to Wrigley or in and around Wrigley. And the Cubs go for a rare sweep against the White Sox. Two and one the count now to Carlos Lee. Out on Waveland Avenue, they had a uh, a broom relay race going. Carrying the broom like the Olympic torch out there. Two and one. And that ball is just foul. Another soft liner down the right field line, but foul. Two and two. White Sox have been facing pretty good pitching lately. Santana, as we mentioned, Thursday in Minnesota. Zambrano, who's a monster. I mean, he's got great stuff. Beat them here Friday. Greg Maddox yesterday. But Glendon Rush tonight, the game of his life. Eight innings. Shut him out. Just got a piece of that curveball. Two and two. Well, Hawkins has an excellent breaking ball, and he has an overpowering fastball. And you, you can see he can use either pitch for his strikeout pitch. That makes it more difficult for the hitter when he gets two strikes on him. He doesn't know exactly how he's going to come after him or how he's going to try to finish him off. Everybody at Wrigley Field is standing. Curveball, left center field. Way back there. Carter! Derek Lee got a hanger. And we start over. It's one to one. And we're hearing from the Sox fans now at Wrigley Field. followed the curveball with a good fastball but this is a curveball that does not dip it's not a bad pitch it's away from him and you see Carlos buckles a little bit but he goes out and gets it 
and pulls it over that short porch in left center field. That's only 368 at that point. And you can see a Cub fan did not want the ball. He threw it back. But as I said earlier in the game, it is just very difficult to beat a team one to nothing. Carlos Lee having a big night with his eighth home run. He has kept the White Sox alive. Now Canerco, who has hit 20 home runs this year. He's never hit one against LaTroy Hawkins, but neither had Carlos Lee until tonight. And that's too long. Well, the problem is here is what you'll see now is you'll see LaTroy Hawkins go after Canerco with his fastball. You know, one of the things that pitchers hate is to give up something on their second best pitch. And his curveball is his second best pitch, but you'll see him go after Canerco with the fastball as he's done here. Now he's down 2 0 with the fastball. Canerco is going to have some disappointment about not being named to the All Star team today despite the big first half he's had. 2 0 the count, big pitch here. High in the air to right field. This will stay in the yard. Sammy Sosa at the edge of the warning track. And there you see just goes after him with his best pitch, which was his fastball. Only the New York Yankees have come from behind to win more games this year than have the White Sox. The Yankees have done it 31 times. The White Sox and the Philadelphia Phillies have won 25 games coming from behind. And of course whether or not the White Sox indeed win this one remains to be seen. Here is Aaron Rowan. He is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bounce. Deep third. Nice pickup by Ramon Martinez. And the inning is over. Carlos Lee has tied the ball game with a home run. Moise Salou and Derek Lee will be coming up for the Cubs. It's not over yet in Chicago. Do you talk more about your car than your girlfriend? Is hitting a puddle your worst nightmare? Does a swirl in your paint ruin your whole day? I'm Barry McGuire, and if this is you, you're car crazy, and you're going to love our next generation tech wax. It eliminates fine scratches and swirls while creating crystal clear reflections that make your paint literally explode with color. Serious car care for car crazy people. Only from McGuire's. You have contractors in L.A. Assemblers in Atlanta. And a deadline in Houston. We can design, deliver, and manage your communications for all of them across platforms, across America. Consider the dots connected. SBC. from Adidas. Running will never be the same. Exclusively at Finish Line. Welcome back to the LendingTree.com Turn the Tables Telethon, where bankers are waiting to compete over your home equity loan. Call 1-800-555-TREE, fill out one form, and get up to four offers in minutes. Now, normally, we don't do telethons, but with home equity rates as low as 3.75% APR, we had to let you know. Call now to take advantage of the no closing cost option. Go to LendingTree.com or call now, 1-800-555-TREE. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. And here is Moises Alou, as they like to chant here at Wrigley Field. So Moises Alou, who is the Cubs' leading home run hitter for the year, with 19 up against Shingo Takatsu, the former closer of the uh, Colt Swallows. And that one, kind of a, a rising slider up and away. One ball and no strikes. 
Takatsu has pitched 31 in the third innings and only allowed 16 hits this year for the White Sox. And that one curves outside. Look how, look how slowly that's thrown. 59 miles an hour. Jose Valentin now at shortstop for the White Sox after hitting for Uribe. After Alou, Derek Lee, who has hit a home run for the Cubs tonight. And then Michael Barrett due third. Got the call on that one. Moises thought it was too low. Two and one the count now. Third baseman Joe Creedy is hugging the third base foul line. And that's through the open hole. Base hit. Well, Takatsu was behind in a count, so he had to come with a couple of fastballs. And Moises Alou was waiting for this last one. He didn't want to walk the leadoff hitter in a tie ball game. Slider outside. Slider outside. This is a sinker he gets the call on. Right on the corner. And another fastball in just almost identical spot. He pulls it in the left field for a base hit. That was hit hard. I don't know if he would have caught it even if he's playing in normal position, but he definitely was guarding the line, which you're supposed to do. This late in the ball game. And pretty standard baseball. Yeah strategy to that is keep the guy from getting into scoring position. I don't think you'll see Derek Lee bunting here in this situation although Freedy comes running in from third and Lee drops down a bunt. The throw's going to go to first. Wow. Lee who has knocked in the only Cubs run of the game. Well that wasn't a sacrifice. He was just trying to catch him by surprise and drop the ball down the third baseline for a base hit. But he still gets the go the winning run in the scoring position. If this ball's down at third baseline, he gets a base hit, but he drops it right out in front of the plate. And that allows Burke to get out there and get it. See, if that ball's down at third baseline, he gets a base hit. But again, he did not square around. He was just trying to beat it out for a base hit. But he accomplishes the same thing by getting Moises Alou in the scoring position. There's Damaso Marte, the left hander up in the Cubs bullpen. Now, if you're Dusty Baker and you didn't call for the bunt, you got one of your sluggers up there. Are you are you not happy about that? Well, now you understand what he was trying to do. I mean, he was trying to beat it out for a base hit, but at the worst, he gets the winning run in the score position. So I don't think he would be that upset. I mean, it, may, it may not be something that. You know he likes, but at least he, you know, he did move the, the the winning run in the scoring position. Well, if I'm Dusty, I want him swinging from the well, hips. I no, you have to remember two things. He probably hasn't seen Takatsu very often much. I mean, and Takatsu looks to me like he's very difficult for a right-handed hitter to handle, especially when you haven't seen him. But again, if he drops the ball down the third baseline where he was trying to, you'd have runners at first and second now, and then you might have Barrett try to bunt the, the winning run in the score over the third base. And there he is. Moise Salou at second base. Michael Barrett has hit 333 for the year with runners in scoring position. They're not going to give him a shot at it here. They're going to walk him intentionally. Well what they're doing they're trying to give the Cubs only one shot at driving in the winning run. If they pitch to Barrett and even if they get him out then they have to get one more out either Martinez or Ordonez. So what you do here is you walk the runner to first base, try to get them, give them one shot, get the ground ball, and you're out of the inning. So instead of giving them two shots, you're trying to eliminate one of them and give them just the one chance to drive in the winning run. So now Ramon Martinez. They have Todd Walker available, but remember the Cubs are a little short-handed right now. One of their sluggers, Aramis Ramirez, in fact, their leading RBI man, Injured a groin muscle here on Friday, and he is not available at all. Now, and this is actually standard baseball 101 here, where you just try to get the ground ball, get out of the inning. The runner at first means nothing, so you might as well put him over there anyway, set up the double play. Two men on, one man out. Fastball just off the outside. 
I mean, there's such a wide range in the speeds of this guy's pitches. We've seen Takatsu throw an 88 mile an hour fastball right there. We've seen him throw a curveball at 59 miles an hour. But I think if you're Martinez, you've been sitting over there watching the guy pitch. You say to yourself, I'm going to sit on a fastball and swing at nothing else. And he's thrown at two fastballs, but not in the strike zone. And I think that's smart hitting there by Martinez. He's sitting on a fastball. Hey, if you get the fastball, go ahead. If you don't get what you want, go ahead and take it. He's in the same situation here. 2-0, oh, you can't swing in a, at a changeup or a curveball. Sit on the fastball and make him give you a pitch to hit. 2-0, oh, big pitch. 3-0. And you have to, I mean, if he walks you, you're also putting the winning run in the scoring position at third base with less than two outs. And this is just very smart hitting here by Ramon Martinez. And that brings everybody up off their seat once again. Taken all the way, strike one. Ray Ordonez is on deck. And you're sitting in the same situation again, John. Three and one is like two and oh. You sit dead. Fastball. I won't say dead red because he doesn't throw that hard, but you sit for a fastball and take anything else. Three and one. It's too low. And now the bases are loaded. And Moise Salou, the possible winning run, goes to third base. And it no longer will take a base hit to knock in the winning run. And now a pinch hit is going to come up. Todd Walker will pinch it. For Ordonez, Damaso Marte, the left-hander, is ready in the White Sox bullpen, meanwhile. Now, this is why it's so difficult for a guy to be a closer and he doesn't have a good fastball. Because you're not always going to be able to throw the curveball for a strike, and you're not always going to get the hitter to chase that curveball for a strike out of the strike zone. And when you have to come in, you're in trouble all the time. And you see Marte... Uh, Takatsu was trying to make perfect pitches knee high and away with the fastball. You can't do that. Azuki Jen is coming out. White Sox manager, he has not yet made a call to the bullpen. There's the call. He has signaled for the left-hander, Marte. And we'll see what Dusty Baker's response is. Base is loaded. One out. We'll be back. When I pull something off the grill, I want it big. I want it plump. I want it girthy. In fact, girthy is one of my favorite words. I like the way it rolls off my tongue. Girthy. Now this, this Grillmaster dog right here, that's what I call girthy. Girthy. Girthy is good. Ballpark Grillmaster Franks. Be big, be meaty, be frank. Girthy. Mm. This year, he'll spend 32 hours trimming bushes, 61 hours mowing the lawn, 52 hours watering flowers. But he won't have to refinish his deck for another four years. Bare premium weatherproofing wood sealer and finish with silicone. Four-year protection against rain, sun, wind, and snow, guaranteed. Bare. Get it right every time. To cure athlete's foot, you've got to be fast on your feet. And nothing lets you treat faster than Lamisil AT. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. Not even a prescription can beat that. If you use Tenactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. Who's going to do that? When your feet itch and burn, using Lamisil AT one week is proven to kill the fungus and keep you athlete's foot free for three months. Lamisil AT. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. Introducing the 5 megapixel Cybershot T1 from Sony. The great little camera with a great big screen. Cybershot from Sony. Like no other. There is Damaso Marte trying to keep the White Sox alive in this one and get the game to extra innings. And the situation that he inherits finds the bases loaded. The possible winning run over at third base. Marte to face the left-handed batting. Todd Walker. The infield is in halfway at short and second, not quite all the way in. Ooh. Well, the 
one luxury that Dusty Baker has with this ball club is that he has two real good hitting second basemen, Todd Walker and, of course, Mark Grezelani. They're excellent hitters. And you do not mind sending Todd Walker up in this situation. He handles the bat well, and he knows what the situation is, and he, I think he's one of the better hitters you're going to find in, from the left side. Nice pitch there by Marte. Good slider after the 94-mile-an-hour fastball. And now he's ahead of him 0-2. Well, Marte gets him to chase one off the outside corner, but it's a good pitch by Marte. And now you see Oz again moving him back a little bit. He laid off. He tried to go for the strikeout with the high hard one. Walker trying to get that run in. By the way, not just the infield in, but the outfielders are in. Yeah, but they're not in normally as close as you would send them because if the ball falls in front of them, the game's over. And if they're playing back that deep, that's still deep enough for a sacrifice fly. Normally, you play the infield, the outfielders in a little bit more. The infielders are usually a little. The outfielders are in a little bit so that they can catch a line drive and keep the guy from scoring. You can always go back on a pop-up. Walker stays alive. A fastball from Marte. And he's been on the defensive ever since that first pitch here from Marte. Neither team has had a hit tonight with a runner in scoring position. Cubs 0 for 4. The White Sox 0 for 5. And the lefties have not done well against Marte as a group this year. Again, the high hard one, and Walker chased it and fouled it. Well, that's a good pitch by Marte. Try to go up the ladder, try to get the strikeout. I mean, you want him to swing at this pitch, trying to get a strikeout way up the ladder, and he's able to foul it back. Left handed hitters have had five hits in 49 at bats against Marte for the year. One and two the count. Bases loaded, one out. Two and two. Walker, who was probably the best hitter the Red Sox had in that league championship series with the Yankees last year. Excellent professional hitter. There's Alou. He's the one that counts. He's the possible winning run at third. Barrett and Martinez also on the bases. That's a blue. Left field line foul. That's the other reason that you play the outfielders in. You can't let the ball fall in front of you. It doesn't do you any good. It's almost like they're, they're saying, well, I'm in a spot where I could come running in to catch a fly ball and make a throw, but you make the, the no. point about what's wrong with that scenario. Now it is three and two. And it all comes down to this one. There's nowhere to put him. He's got to throw a strike. A lot of pressure on Marte with this pitch. The ninth pitch of this battle with Marte to Walker. The pressure is not on Walker. Walker just has to make sure he throws a strike. starts to fall build on the pitcher and that last pitch you had said the pressure's all on Marte all on Marte and it certainly looked as though he was feeling that pressure as he threw that last one in the dirt well it's not as though the Cubs just won the pennant but until they do this will have to suffice the Cubs fans celebrate 
with a full-throated roar, they have swept the Crosstown rivals, the Chicago White Sox, here at Wrigley Field. Two to one, Cubs win. That's the final from Wrigley, and currently over on ESPN2, don't forget, the Dodgers and the Angels are underway. Check that one out. For Joe Morgan, Sam Ryan, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm John Miller. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed our telecast. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. That's all from Wrigley Field. Stay tuned. Sports Center coming up next. Two cities await a decision from Coach K. Will there be a holiday celebration in Durham or L.A. this 4th of July? And there's nothing more red, white, and blue than our national pastime. Now, the game, though, sometimes leaves players black and blue. Sports Center's right now.